The Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival was held in July 2010 at the Stellenbosch University Conservatorium and aimed to provide talented young musicians with the opportunity to study, perform and be inspired by chamber music and orchestral playing to an internationally recognized and professional standard. Once again, this 10-day festival puts Stellenbosch University and South Africa on the international music calendar with an event that provided outstanding musicianship as well as providing a nurturing ground for young talent. Each year, a select number of top national and international institutions are invited to send student groups to attend the festival. Over 200 national and international students aged 12 to 28 took part and were divided into a number of chamber music groups. They were assigned repertoires on which they received coaching from respected South African and international chamber music experts who made up the festival faculty. The students were also given the opportunity to perform. Tuition was given for piano, strings, woodwinds, brass and percussion instruments. The festival featured public masterclasses as well as student and faculty chamber music performances. The highlights being three concerts by the Festival Symphony and Festival Concert Orchestras, drawn from the students. The students were all very enthusiastic and had plenty of World Cup spirit to guide them through. We are Stellenbosch. The best festival of the year. Yes, genau. Feel it, it is, yeah. This is the best festival of the year. It's the best ever. This is the best festival of this the year. This is where we... Meeting, in all new meeting other people, people building international. Up, building up contacts. Yes. It's the best place to Facebook, be. Facebook, 3,000 friends <laughs> from all over the world. We wanted to gauge the level of excitement that this annual event generates in the students. So first, we asked them what they most looked forward to. Well, I'm looking forward to the cello concerto because it's like my favorite cello concerto. So I'm like looking forward to being in the orchestra playing it. They came from far and wide, and they came from just down the road. I come from Ronbosch in Cape Town. Uh, I play the oboe and the coranglay, which is like the oboe. Um, yeah, I've been playing music for a good five, six years and come from a musical family. I'm from Belar in Cape Town. I'm currently studying music at UCT. It's my first year now. And I've been playing for about since I was seven. I am from Calida, and I play the flute. Um, I'm doing my grade 7 UNISA exams this year. I'm from Zimbabwe. I go to Chizzy School. It's an all-girls school in Zimbabwe and I play the flute. I play the flute and I'm from Joburg. I've been playing for about five or six years. I started when I was 12 and I've just really, it's really one of my passions and I've been enjoying it ever since then. I study music at the University of Stellenbosch. Um, I take violin as my first instrument. I'm a third year music student uh, specializing in solo performance. Uh, Suzanne Martins, who's part of the faculty, is my teacher. Then we asked them if they were excited and what did they expect. It's the most incredible thing you can ever imagine. It's Sitting there having all those amazing people just, you know, coming together and making this beautiful music is, it's just unbelievable. It's an experience like no other. The performances, especially the evening concerts, are fantastic. Like the level of musicianship is just amazing and it's really, you learn, almost, you, you know, you get inspired and you learn so much. What is special about this whole chamber festival for me is that um, previously I've been playing only in church and the Moravian church with the um, brass band and so on. It's really a privilege playing under the baton of Viktor Jampolski. Yeah, I'm playing in a concert orchestra this year.
Hayalicha was well represented by these three students, back for a second year running, but like most, a little nervous. No. <laughs> My audition is in, in, in a few minutes. Yes, mine uh, is at 2 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm pretty amped, uh, pretty nervous at the same time. Should be, should be a good experience though. Yeah. They do seem to start them at an early age around here. Auditions were the main focus of the first day, and once completed, the festival moved on to the master classes, followed by evening performances. This year's faculty was a truly impressive collection of South African and visiting international musicians, many of whom hold virtuoso status on their respective instruments. Amongst the distinguished faculty members at this year's festival was Carol Winchenk, currently Professor of Flute at both the Juilliard School of Music and Stony Brook University. Her stature in the teaching and performing world is unsurpassed. Carol has appeared as soloist with major orchestras around the world and has premiered works written for her by many of today's most prominent composers. World-renowned and multi-award-winning violinist Daniel Rowland has developed a versatile career as a sought-after soloist, chamber musician and teacher. He was appointed as first violinist in the London-based Brodsky String Quartet in 2007. His work in the fields of classical core repertoire as well as contemporary music makes him one of the most inspirational violinists alive today. His personal conviction that classical music still has a lot of perspectives among young people has even resulted in his own festival, Stift, currently celebrating its sixth anniversary in the Netherlands. Portuguese horn player Abel Pereira is an outstanding exponent of the French horn. Abel has been performing as a soloist and principal horn player since the age of 11. Uh, well, I'm doing this festival um, for six years, so it's my, actually my sixth year. It's very interesting to find out that the, the level is growing up every year. It's, it's good when you find out that you can help someone to do better things and also very good to find out that in the next year they will come again and they do the things that you asked for in the, in the past year. You know, before I came my first time to Stellenbosch, I didn't know anything about South Africa. And I thought South Africa would be another country from Africa, you know. And it's, it's really not. It's, I find out South Africa actually is like a European country with the African soul, which is very, very nice. South African-born Leon Bosch has an honoured place amongst a select group of worldwide virtuoso double bass players. Apart from the acclaim garnered from appearing with a number of leading chamber music orchestras and ensembles, he also has a growing discography of concerto and recital recordings. My name is Leon Bosch, I'm a double bass player and as you probably guessed I was born in Cape Town. And I left here as a very, very young man with great idealism. I went to England to study. And as it happens, I ended up living there for all my life since then. So I've been there about nearly 30 years now. For me, the most important thing about coming home is to return a little bit of those things which I benefited from when I grew up here. So there are many young people who remind me of myself when I was young. The opportunities I had, the opportunities I didn't have, the struggles I had, and the things I had to do to make possible what I do today. So in essence, Without this, I wouldn't be complete. Klaus Christa from Austria is professor of viola and chamber music at the Vorarlberger Landesconservatorium in Feldkirch, where he has been head of the string department since 1999. 
Apart from this, he is principal viola of the Vorarlberg Symphony and has regular quartet engagements. He is also in demand as a soloist and chamber musician. I love to play the concerts with my colleagues. It's always a great joy and, and a big experience. And I liked the, the Bocciabella String Project concert. Um, they invited me to conduct them and it was you know, a honor and a joy because they are so nice and so enthusiastic. It's, great. it's very special atmosphere. I mean, the enthusiasm is really uh, extraordinary. I, I, I don't know one place where this, this vibration is so, so enthusiastic for the whole time. I mean, rehearsing and, and teaching, it's very special, really very special. Stellenbosch is it's great, it's a, it's a postcard, it's, it's really it's, um, a treasure. Returning to this year's festival was Lacolian Washington, who hails from Texas, USA, and is considered in his homeland to be amongst the premier bassoonists of his generation. Compared to other uh, festivals in the States in particular, um, this one, this, this festival compares you know, very well. Um, the students at this festival are an extremely high level, uh, particularly the upper sections, the upper parts of the sections, I mean those guys are really good. They would compare to any of the players in the United States, I would say. Uh, from a faculty standpoint, um, as you know, having participated in other international festivals, the faculty here are really world class. Um, you know, it's, 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 when I come here, it's so great to be able to just sit down and, and we just make great music and you're so many concerts, you have great music every night. Esteemed teacher, conductor and violinist, Victor Yampolsky serves as music director emeritus of the Omaha Symphony and is the Carol F. and Arthur L. Rice Junior University Professor in Music Performance at the Northwestern University School of Music. He holds various other musical directorships in Wisconsin, USA and Halifax, Canada. This was his third visit to the festival. In the festival we have students of all levels I call it teaching in one room school, which used to be a norm in, in the countryside. We have some who are university and college level. We have some who are high school level. And then we have others who are pre-high school level. Therefore, our duty is to share with everyone everything we know and to give everyone the help they badly need to keep them concentrating on the new, unusual problems which I pose for them and deliver. But nevertheless, they are very, very attentive, they're very good soul, and they are learning. They're definitely learning. So I have high hopes for our concert. The result of all the teaching, learning, lectures and conversations could be seen in the three major orchestral concerts which marked the pinnacle of the festival. The 2010 Festival Concert Orchestra featured young student musicians under the baton of Viktor Yampolsky. Another distinguished conductor at the festival was South Africa's own Gerard Korsten. Gerard rehearsed the Festival Symphony Orchestra which features the most talented and experienced students who came together to perform works by Shostakovich, Liebermann, Elgar and Dvorak. These were two memorable concerts indeed. The 
I'm so pleased this year, particularly with the with the World Cup being on, that we had so many people coming and um, being part of the festival at this time. And the faculty e each year, there's some new ones, some ones that have come back from before, and they're working so well together that the whole, just the whole way it's run and the atmosphere and the way the kids are so positive and the, the, the faculty put their all hands on deck, you know, it's very much a team spirit. The organisation and fundraising for this great event was the responsibility of a small team under the guidance of festival director Peter Martens. Uh, the planning for the festival, it's a, it's a very, very long process and I can't really say when do you start for any particular festival. For this festival, in September, I re recall having organized the accommodation for both the students and the faculty because I was nervous that all the guest houses around here would be taken up by World Cup uh, supporters. Um, up to now, we've had a, had a ever-building response from the public, possibly slightly down on last year, but not significantly. But then again, in the hall, it doesn't it looks really good because we have a huge number of uh, student participants and those that are not performing are sitting in the hall. So we have 242 students at this year's festival and uh, you know they oh, they are a tremendous audience. I wish we had them at all concerts here at the Conserve. You know when we as faculty perform uh, you know they really applaud and cheer and uh, it feels so wonderful to play for all of them. have students from all walks of life so you can hear just about any combination of instruments all levels from grade 5 to virtually professional um, there's something for everybody here the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival is the brainchild of Professor Nina Schumann artistic director and professor of piano studies at Stellenbosch University my main function is to make sure that the program that we present, um, that we present something that's balanced, that is appealing to the public, but more importantly it has to be really, really appealing to the artists. So we try and cater to the artists in order to have a, a really, really successful musical event, not only as an educational festival, but also as an um, entertaining festival. Goedenavond en hartelijk welkom. Luister nou mooi, lieve, lieve klas. Luister toch bij je mooi. Vandaag wordt mijn les even aangepakt. I I think there's been so many stories. Um, you know, there's such pressure at this festival on on the faculty as well, um, which I think is something really unique and, and that rubs off on the students because we generally have a between three and four hours of rehearsal per piece. That's really absolutely nothing in order to put a piece together and, and go and present it on stage. And we had one. Um, particularly interesting incident this year because on the second night of the festival um, two of the members of a specific group um, notified us in advance that they had tickets for the World Cup game and the game was in Cape Town at 4.30 in the afternoon and they had to be on stage at 8 o'clock so I was biting my nails like you wouldn't believe and I, I thought that they would never make it so what Peter Martens, our festival director, did was he arranged a motorbike gang to pick them up in Cape Town at, at a designated point, take them to the stadium and then pick them up after the game and race them through to Salabat. So, <laughs> and it was still a, a memorable performance. Uh, you know, so these, these little human things that, that goes on behind the scenes, I, I think it just gives it so much spice. As with most festivals and events of this nature, funding remains the greatest need and the greatest challenge. Fundraising, I think, is a crucial part of what I do, if, if not the most important thing. And the festival this year has cost us in the order of 1.25 million, about a quarter of a million of which comes in as revenue from the students that pay fees and from the concerts, etc. And about a million 
of which I have to source from the private sector, from, from within the university, the various funding sources. The thing is we do need more generalised sponsoring because the fees doesn't even cover the cost price of the meals and the accommodation. So, you know, flying out the faculty and paying their fees is all over and above that. One of the innovative things that we are going to do with the fundraising this year is we're going to hold an auction in, in uh, two, three days' time on the final day of the festival. And this is uh, connected with our new image. Uh, this is done by a Portuguese artist, Luís Mendonça. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. And he cuts this out of a single piece of paper with a knife. And um, he's given us four of these images and we've used that to kind of rebrand the festival this year. And um, we'll be auctioning off as many pictures as we can um, on the final ceremony because, uh, truth be told, we, we're still uh, a few, few digits short of the ideal. It is said that a nation's greatness can best be displayed by the diversity of its culture. The successful holding of the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa showed that South Africa can rise to any occasion. The University of Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival, although a success of a different kind, is a very important event on the Southern African music calendar and, like the World Cup, equally deserves the continued support of sponsors and audiences alike.